What I'm saying is the bike was the place that I went that all that disappeared. All the noise stopped and I could just, like, I just got lost in it. And I'm glad I kept going because in that next year, like, being able to dive into riding that way, like, really helped me. I never wanted to stop. I can see why my family might have wanted to. There's two things that pop up on my Instagram feed all the time. And one of them <laughs> is the, the goon riding video from early on and the other one is the battle with Stu. I can honestly say that was one of the funnest races I ever raced. We battled hard. The, the second moto we battled, but the first moto, it was like... It was on. It was on. A good point when you talk about the like the technicality with some of these guys. I mean, that's something that I've just been like f hammering for the last couple of years. I really think we're like entering a new kind of era in the sport. Like as a dude that's on the ground riding the same bikes, like being around those guys, like what do you see in them technically? And you can go as deep and as detailed as you want here. But what are you kind of like seeing in those guys that just wasn't really a thing when you were at your peak? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is their feet. Like, yeah. they are so good with their feet. You know, my, my, like, we came off the heels of RC, feet everywhere, sitting through the bumps, like, just carrying mad speed and hammering, you know? So that's, that's the stuff that we kind of like saw and we're like, yeah, that's sick. You know? <laughs> that's what's up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. See if I can hit this turn without letting off, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> how far can you charge in? You know, I'll charge in harder, whatever. Uh, but to see, like, the their feet are so good all the time. And it, and that kind of, like, translate to where, where their knees are and where their hips are. They're using the lower half of their body so much better and more efficient than than we were. And then that lends to being able to set the bike up differently. You know, when you're kind of loose with your feet and, and really light on the pegs, you don't really load the bike. Well, you kind of have to have a softer setup. Um, cause you don't have anything kind of like pushing the bike to the ground all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say the rear of the bikes have, has gotten stiffer, uh, in the last five, 10 years, uh, you know, from kind of the beginning of my time in the sport to the end, it was kind of like you saw more kind of choppered out bikes, stiff forks, uh, soft, slow shocks where, where now it's kind of like you see a little stiffer more fast rebounds, yeah, yet stiff, yeah, stiffer, yeah, faster. Yeah. The forks yeah. are getting more compliant. And, and I think a lot of it has to do with the way that they're able to weight the rear of the bike um, and keep it connected to the ground. And they're not so reliant on the, the, the top of their bodies, you know, um, so they can keep it glued down. And then, and then also, um, when you do that, you can have a softer fork cause you're not relying so heavily on smashing into things and, you know, just doing more mile an hour into the turn. And instead it's like, I'm going to be methodical with my feet, methodical with the lines, methodical with the throttle. And it's going to be more about miles per hour than it is actually just smashing everything. Yeah. 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 Man, that's so, so interesting uh, to hear you say that about like the shock setup and the the softer, faster kind of um, setup because I was watching Jet through the section after the second turn at Colorado and then you've got the big left hand sweeper um, that's after that, that straightaway and he's standing up and like you can see there's like slow motion footage and you can see how fast that shock is is rebounding and like it is just glued to the ground and and yeah i remember thinking that the shock looked really really quick like even in slow motion it like visibly mm -hmm. looked looked faster so it's very interesting to hear that yeah and it's uh i think our bike in general it just that. leans towards that. Yeah. It, it leans to towards that for sure. But, um, but I, I also think that it's, it's kind of the trend. Uh, yep. I think things are headed that way as far as, you know, dampening character and things like that, where, you know, me going through that section, you know, 10 years ago, you know, I, I don't think my, I, I would have been connected enough to the, to the, the pegs and to the bike. 
I probably would have just been bucked all around by it, you know. Um, I would have wanted that thing slow and dead. And, you know, stance was so big in that time. We, we wanted that the thing basically to never move. And so you see it looks like a trophy truck. You know, yeah, it's like the yeah, wheel is yeah, just like, yeah. you know. And I, I thought it looked really cool through there. Like it was glued to the ground and he was going so fast. So um, it, it's definitely, I think, Ken uh, brought some of that to our team. Yep. And um, I had to learn it for sure. It, yeah. But I one, once I did learn it, I saw the benefits of it, um, especially turning, um, you know, you get that chatter, how well it actually follows the ground and gets through there. Um, yep. There's some major, major benefits to it. And then is there anything different i guess in the sag characteristics then that you um that you will play off that kind of setup yeah it's i think for for a bike it's about a range um you know when i was uh racing and kind of in that era there it was like every bike kind of wanted to be 105 to yeah 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 you know yeah. I've kind of thrown all that out the window now. It's like, it's just a number. So if that number ends up being 98 or that number ends up being 112, like it's just a number. And then you, and then you build your range from there. Yeah. Um, I, I, I see some mistakes with that sometimes. Some people are like, no, the bike has to be 105. That's, that's what, you know, whatever. When me it, it, now it's kind of like the, the bike, our bike works in a, in a range and it's kind of like 100 to, to 105. Um, yeah. we get outside of that. It kind of gets a little bit tough, you know, 98 to, I'd say we're 98 to 102, 105. That's kind of like our, our range, you know, and, and each guy can kind of vary from there. Um, but I, I think for sure that it's trended higher. Yeah. It, in, in SAG numbers, you know, um, well, I guess lower in SAG numbers, but the, the actual height of the bike, I think is, is gone up a little bit. Yeah. 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 And I think, uh, it was really interesting this weekend in particular to watch the difference between Jet's bike and Ferrandis's bike. Like, yeah. dude, they had that Yamaha sagged out. <laughs> like he looked like he was riding a, a legit chopper with the bars that he runs too. So <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it was very, very interesting to see like the direction because they're obviously like that team. They're obviously just like kind of chasing something around. And even uh, before the national started this year, I was watching the MXGP boys at Argentina. I don't know if you you follow the GP yeah, stuff yep. much, but man, those Yamahas look twitchy at that first MXGP. And I was yeah. like, I was like, huh, shorter like more compact setup this thing's killing it in supercross like how's it going to go outdoors and then you see that those boys were really struggling with it in the gps and then if you look at what they've had to do on ferranis's bike to obviously like compensate it's uh yeah it's crazy to see the difference yeah and again going kind of going back to the range uh, of of those numbers certain bikes you just have to kind of deal with it you know like uh we you know chase really struggled uh the first couple of years because our our bike it likes to be tall in the rear and if you kind of go against that it starts to do things that um that that aren't great you know yeah um and chase was really fighting that he really wanted the rear of the bike low um is that is that because of like so for me when i ride a honda 450 that i feel like very very cautious of the front end like it feels very tucky like compared to a ktm i feel like i probably lean on the ktm way too much like and trust the mm -hmm. front a lot um i had a period of crashes a couple of years ago where i was just constantly tucking the front because i was like really leaning on it so in my mind with like chase wanting it a little bit lower is he trying to get away from like that kind of like nervous like front end sort of feeling for sure chase and stability um you know that that's uh and then the natural you know when you go into a set of whoops in the rear's eye you kind of go like oh man i don't know how this is gonna work <laughs> yeah but but it's what our bike likes and so uh you know we we we've had to find other ways to find the stability um with keeping the rear in a in a range that it works yeah in. yeah um 
so I, I it's tough with a first year model you know with the yamaha i know that's that's the difficult task is trying to figure out what it likes and i'm sure they're trying to I they're think trying it's a to go way low they're trying to swing to, arm <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and, and i wouldn't be surprised if you're trying old stuff you know, you, you really search in those, those times, but they'll get it figured out. You know, I think that's yeah. pretty typical for the first year of a big change like this is, is you got to spend a, a year getting to know what it, what it wants. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang. 